Alright, so I'm going to show you guys how to overclock. As you guys can see, mine is already set to 5G's up at the top, and I set it all back to auto just to show you guys exactly how to do it. Now I got a little bit of hate for my last one because I guess I didn't explain it good enough. So I'm going to type in 50 to all of these manually with one hand because I'm holding my phone. So bear with me. So I just punch in 50 for all these because it's making the turbo speed of each one of these cores up to the full 5G. And now the, with my last video, you can see how it switched up. With my last video, I had it set to auto. So what I mean by that is it's the power consumption right here. I like leaving mine set to auto when I first overclock any of my systems to see if I can get away with it. And I just watch temps. If temps are a little high, I dial it back. So if you look up, uh, so I'm using an MSI 370, but if you look up the 390 like most people are going to be using because they didn't have a previous generation processor to update the 370, they're pretty much the exact same motherboard. All said and done, other than the BIOS flash is already done to a 390. Is, uh, it says it should be set to 1.43, which is a little bit high, but some people do need to do that. So every CPU isn't made the exact same. Some people can get away with things that other people can't. So I'm just going to type in 1.35 and it should go into the red zone. Actually, I'm going to try just this. And this is probably the lowest voltage you can probably get away with. And I'm just going to try saving it. So it should say... There's my difference, so I went from a 1.390 because I realized that my 1.40 was a little bit too high. Uh, I was getting decent temps, but I slowly dialed it back like everyone should, so now I'm going to try a 1.35 and see if I can get it to post. So basically, if you can start up the, a game and it runs fine, just keep testing. Try out the lowest possible voltage and slowly bring yourself up each time. If, it, if it's running at a lower voltage and you're still getting decent FPS, it will make the system cooler. So start off with auto, make sure it works at 5G's and actually holds. Right after that, watch the temps. If temps are a little bit high, go back over and start from 1.35 and try to get away with that. 1.1, 1.43 is usually what most people use, uh, but you can try getting away. 1.39 was the lowest that I first tried and it was working perfectly fine. My temps are fantastic. Setting idle, it was 30. I have a liquid cooler. Uh, it's actually quite expensive and it's hard to get your hands on, especially in the States. So I can send you a link, but you're not going to get the RGB one like what I have. My cooler is awesome. I cannot complain. So it's having a little bit of long time posting. So let's just see what happens here. So I think I'm going to go with the chance that it probably isn't posting correctly. Give it like another 30 seconds. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to just restart it. Oh, it got it. All right, so now what you're gonna do, just to make sure everything's working fine, I don't have my uh, 2070 Super in. I'm testing out my much weaker card, 1650 Super. So you're just gonna wander your way over to user, PC benchmark. This is the one that I like to use. It's super, super easy, really easy to read, convenient. It gives you a general uh, system score for your computer. And then you just open it, click yes, navigate yourself over to here. I usually just close that. And just to make sure I get the best possible reading, I'm going to close a bunch of these things that I don't need. So the CPU is not going to be getting overused. Because I want the highest possible score. And then it will do its little run. And then if you look closely, you can read what each component is doing. And if you don't have on-screen FPS display when it shows the images, you can actually read what FPS you got for each one. It's also a good test because if something is malfunctioning or it doesn't work properly, it will come up with a fail, so you can tell something with your computer isn't working properly. But I am very curious to see if my 
CPU actually performs as it should with a very, very low underclocking. So you can see my FPS up there in the corner. And if you don't have that and you're using like an uh, RX 580 or another AMD card, it will say right there the uh, FPS you got. And then you just have to wait the 25 seconds. And then right after that, it will pop back up down here and you can read your scores. And I'll go over how to read it just in case this is somebody's first time using this program. So now down here it should come up. And then you guys can see that my gaming overall didn't do as great. I don't have any overclocking to my GPU currently, but you guys can see right here my base clock of 3.7 and then my turbo speed of 5Gs and performed way above expectations at 104%, which is pretty similar to the same thing. I had 65% background CPU usage as well, so holy most moly, that did really well. Uh, for some reason it didn't test my SSD where my Windows is saved on for some reason. It's weird. So yeah, not an absolute perfect score by any means, but still decent. I got the speed that I was looking for. I am curious though what is running in the background. So just going to go to Task Manager. And, like, nothing's really running in the back. I don't know why I came up 65, unless there were still programs loading before I started. So if you do have that problem and you do have a high CPU use, which will be right here, you can just redo it, run the test again, see what you get. Just have to make sure that you are seeing the 5G turbo, and it is scoring much higher than it should.